Hello, my name is Dr. Shanda Blackman, and I'm a thoracic surgeon at Mayo Clinic. Along with the Department of Surgery, the Division of Thoracic Surgery, the Division of Pulmonary Medicine, and Medical Oncology, and Radiation Oncology, and Radiology, we've put together an individual patient education video for patients who have been diagnosed with malignant mesothelioma. We'll be talking about ways that the tumor is caused, different treatment options, different opportunities for enrollment into clinical trials, and ways that you can get different types of surgery. We hope that you find this educational, and we look forward to seeing you. Malignant mesothelioma. What is malignant mesothelioma? It is a rare type of cancer that can develop in the thin layer of tissue that covers most of your internal organs. That layer of tissue is called the mesothelium. This can be involving the lungs, the abdomen, the heart, or the testicles. Possible causes of mesothelioma include asbestos and many other risk factors, such as a personal history of asbestos exposure, living with someone who works with asbestos, exposure to other fibrous materials, or a family history of mesothelioma. Some of the symptoms and complications of mesothelioma include the way that it may affect tissue that surrounds the lung. If this happens, it can cause symptoms such as chest pain under the rib cage, pain during coughing, shortness of breath, unusual lumps of tissue underneath the skin on your chest, or unexplained weight loss. Some of the tests and diagnoses that are available to you if you have signs and symptoms that might indicate mesothelioma can be ordered by your physician who will conduct a physical exam to check for any lumps or unusual signs. He, may listen, he or she may listen to your lungs, palpate your abdomen, and ultimately a biopsy may be performed. Depending on what area of your body is affected, your doctor may choose one of the following biopsy options, including a needle biopsy, a camera inside the chest, which is called thoracoscopy, a camera inside the abdomen, which is called laparoscopy, or making an open abdominal incision, which is called a laparotomy. Identifying the cancer stage is one of the most important first steps for patients who are diagnosed with mesothelioma. Typically, for patients who have what's called pleural mesothelioma, which means it's on the lining of the lung or the inside of the chest, are diagnosed by placing a tiny single port into the chest. It's important that only one tiny port is created because in the future, that may seed a tract of tumor that can grow to the outside of the chest. So when patients go for surgery, later on having it removed, by having only one port site used to diagnose this tumor, it is easily excised at the time of definitive surgery. Through this single port, a biopsy might be performed where either the lining of the chest wall is stripped away or the lining of the lung is pulled away. Any bleeding is typically treated directly at that time. Both the biopsy instrument and the camera go through the same small port. Other ways to create a stage to find out how extensive the mesothelioma is and help guide therapy include, but are not limited to, a CAT scan of the chest and abdomen, a magnetic resonance image, positron emission tomography, also known as PET, endoscopic ultrasound, also called EUS, endobronchial ultrasound, also called EBUS, diagnostic staging laparoscopy, pulmonary function testing, and diagnostic thoracoscopy. Identifying the cancer stage is the most important part of your treatment for malignant mesothelioma. If you've been diagnosed, you want to make sure that your doctor tells you what your stage is based on these tests that have been performed. If they are unable to give you your stage of mesothelioma, then you should seek a second opinion from a group that can give you your stage before you make decisions about treatment. When you look at your chest, as if you're looking at yourself reversed, 
To the left of the screen is your right lung. To the right of the screen is your left lung. The lining on top of your lung is called the visceral pleura. There is space between the visceral pleura and the chest wall. The lining on the inside of the chest wall is called the parietal pleura. Deep to that, you'll see the ribs and the muscle in between the ribs, which is typically combined to create your chest wall. It is important to make sure that the mesothelioma has not spread through the diaphragm into the abdomen if it begins inside the chest. It is also important to make sure that it has not spread from the pleural space into the mediastinum where the trachea and the heart exist. It is also important to make sure that it has not gone through the pericardium into the heart. All of these spreaded areas or involved areas indicate that more advanced disease may be present and might make surgery not as feasible as it would have been if it was not spread. Identifying the cancer stage is one of the most important first steps. You may be diagnosed with anywhere from stage one to stage four mesothelioma. Treatment options can include, but are not limited to, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and surgery. Surgery and other treatment that may be involved can be as limited as placing a drain inside the chest that tunnels underneath the skin with a fibrous cuff, allowing fluid to intermittently be drained as it is connected to a vacuum bottle. This is sometimes referred to as a pleurex catheter, but it may have many other names, and many companies make a catheter such as this. The catheter that is placed in between the lining of the lung and the lining of the chest wall has many perforated holes, allowing the fluid that can sometimes cause the lung to collapse and give you breathlessness to be evacuated from the chest and restore your ability to breathe and allow you to be in control of your disease, chronically draining the fluid and allowing your lung to re-expand. Extended pleurectomy and decortication involves creating a thoracotomy, which is a large incision on the side of the involved chest. And after the ribs are spread, an incision is made between the lining to enter what is called the pleural space. Once the pleural space is exposed, the lining on the lung is stripped away. The lining on the heart sac, called the pericardium, is also removed, and the lining on the diaphragm is also removed. Sometimes, if an extended pleurectomy and decortication is performed, these surfaces are completely removed and are reconstructed with a mesh, sometimes a Gore-Tex mesh, sometimes a biocomposite mesh, and sometimes a non-absorbable woven mesh. It depends on your surgeon's preference what type of mesh they may place. You often want to ask your surgeon what type of mesh they use to recreate these areas if it was used so that you know for your records. If an extra pleural pneumonectomy is performed, the same surgery that we talked about in the previous slide is performed, plus the additional resection of the entire involved lung is removed. The left lung is removed if the mesothelioma is on the left, and the right lung might be removed if the mesothelioma is on the right. Most people can tolerate having an entire lung removed on one side. Once the lung is removed, the diaphragm and the pericardium are also taken away to complete the removal of all visible disease. Once the visible disease has been removed, the area is reconstructed and the chest is closed. A chronic fluid-filled cavity will now exist where the lung used to be. Alternative care options are available to you, and some of these include but are not limited to acupuncture for breathlessness, relaxed breathing exercises, 
muscle relaxation, and sitting near a fan. Many of our pain specialists and relaxation specialists at Mayo Clinic can help you coping with some of the symptoms associated with advanced mesothelioma. Some final thoughts include that a diagnosis of mesothelioma can be very difficult to cope with. Learn about mesothelioma to make decisions about your care. Contact a palliative care team. Studies have shown that patients who have a very advanced cancer who get plugged in early with a palliative care team sometimes live longer than if they didn't in the beginning of their disease. Surround yourself with support. Seek out other people with cancer or similar cancers to help support you. Plan ahead. Our mesothelioma pathway is on this slide and it is not meant to overwhelm you, but it is meant to educate you. Patients presenting with an effusion may either have a known diagnosis of mesothelioma at the time that they come to Mayo Clinic or they may have a minimally invasive biopsy through the single port as we showed earlier. There are three different types of mesothelioma that may be diagnosed at the time of diagnostic laparoscopy, thoracoscopy, or treatment. That is sarcomatoid mesothelioma, biphasic mesothelioma, or epithelioid mesothelioma. Depending on the histology or the type of mesothelioma, decisions will be made about your care. A multidisciplinary tumor board, which is MDTP, will meet to discuss your care, and we will review to see if you could be enrolled into clinical trials, such as freezing the mesothelioma, a measles vaccine, a protocol called the SMART protocol, perhaps a surgery involving extra pleural pneumonectomy, abbreviated by EPP, or pleurectomy and decortication, abbreviated as PND. There is a staging checklist that we will go through to make sure that you've had all of the appropriate staging modalities when they apply to you. And these may include a PET CAT scan, an endobronchial ultrasound, a bronchoscopy, a staging laparoscopy, sometimes a mediastinoscopy, and a video-assisted thoracoscopic biopsy through a single port approach. Based on all the information that's gathered, you will then be given a stage of mesothelioma. Your me mesothelioma may create what's called a pleural effusion, and that can be treated by just sim simply placing a needle into the chest and draining the fluid, or placing the chronic drainage catheter as we showed you earlier or placing a powder inside the chest. There are only very few situations where we believe the powder may help you, and we recommend that you refuse to have the powder placed inside your chest until you've had an opportunity to discuss your candidacy for many of the other trials, as the powder will rule out your ability to have many of these treatment options offered to you. There are many different stages of mesothelioma, and we will go through this in great detail with you once you come into the clinic to be evaluated. We hope that you enjoyed this discussion. We look forward to seeing you. We hope you enjoyed this segment on mesothelioma. We hope you enjoyed hearing about how to stage mesothelioma, the causes of mesothelioma, and some of the different treatment options. If you have questions, feel free to call our office. Thank you for this opportunity to visit with you.